A wonderful evening to you all and welcome to Simpson at 8. The Social Democratic Liberal Party, Sodelpa, remains the main opposition party in the current parliament. But its position as the main voice of the opposition in the upcoming elections is being challenged with the rise of the People's Alliance Party under former Sodelpa leader, Siti Veni Rambuka. Where does Sodelpa see its place in Fiji's political landscape? What are its priority issues? And how will it go about winning votes in the 2022 elections? I am joined this evening by Sodalpa Party Leader, William Ngavoka. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Stanley. All right. Let's, uh, I'd like to start about talking about Sodalpa as, as, as a party itself, because in many ways, uh, to your critics, it's become an image of dysfunction uh, to, to many. So uh, from the outside looking in, it's looking like for Sodalpa is falling apart, or it actually may have already fallen apart in, in, in some people's eyes. So can you tell us about Sodelpa today and why are people leaving Sodelpa? Mm. Thank you, Stanley. Um, it has been about um, 12 months of a rough journey for the party. Uh, when I became party leader in December 2020, there um, was 12 months of quite some challenging times, very, very challenging times. Huh? Um, but, um, as you know, about um, two, three weeks ago, we were the first party to announce our lineup of 20, you know, the first 28. Huh? That Stanley is an indication that, uh, that in spite of all, of all the perceived turmoil in the party, we were, uh, we had our heads down, doing the needful, working with the candidates and developing policies, and um, to the extent that we would now be the, using the word of one of my youth in the, in the, in the, in the office saying, the most ready party for 2022. Mm. Well, you say it's perceived turmoil. It, it looked like a real turmoil uh, within the party. And your announcement of the 28th, the, the big thing really, and we'll, we'll discuss the candidates. Uh, mm. the, the big thing was the people who were not named in the 28th from within the current party. So again, um, you know, what was it? Was it personalities? Was it political power, power struggle? Uh, what, was, happened, what happened to lead to where, uh, you know, party leader left? Uh, five big names, including, a uh, few big names, including Linda and the others have left. And mm. about 10 or 13 sitting parliamentarians have not, uh, have not been named. In the, you know, we thought they'd be amongst the first to be named. Uh, so, so no, let's... Um, Stanley, let's they, have not, there. Yeah, they have not been named because they, uh, they have not uh, applied for a position in 2022. Um, we knew that their loyalty was not with the party, that they are heading elsewhere. And, I, and I, as I've said many times, no hard feelings. You want to stay with Sir um, you will go through the process of the selection. If not, uh, you finish your term in 2022, you are elected by your voters, you'll serve them up to the end of your term, and uh, we go our different ways. Mm -hmm. No hard feelings. I, I, I've, always, I've always said that. Okay, so but the question I'm trying to get is, um, why, you know, why do you think they're leaving? You know, have they told you why they're leaving? They're not happy with your leadership? Are they not happy with... The, Sodelpa was their party, mm -hmm. and they're leaving. So, you know, have you, have you had that frank discussion uh, about what, what they're not happy about with the party? Um, we go back to the beginning, which in this case was 2014. Um, oh, or, or go back to 20, 2001. Sodelpa, which was SDL, is now 21, 22 years old. It is the longest surviving party within the Itoke community. You know, the Alliance had about 17 years, SVT had about 10 years. So Delpa has 21 years now. Huh? Well, uh, if you look at it as SDL, but I mean, well, well, as Sodelpa, you're being We're, like we're an extension years. of SDL. Okay. When we formed the party, of when parliamentary democracy came back in 2014, we were the surviving party. Yeah? We became, we could, not be, we could not be called SDL, but you had to take on a new name because of the new regulations. Right. Everyone wanted to unite. So the unity, we united under the Sodelpa umbrella. We brought in SVT, we brought in PDP, we brought in One VG, uh, we brought in Chem V. When, um, 
when Rambuka left in uh, later after, after the uh, the party leadership election, we knew that when he left, which we, you, you heard me, I mean, you, you know that I asked him to stay, yeah, because you know we we all became part of the Sudalpa tent, so-called tent, and we didn't want him to leave, but he decided to leave, and we knew that he was there. Uh, he, he, he had the loyalty of certain people from his party, from the SVT, from Kembe, from the PDP days. So this is what you see today now. The core SDL people are remaining and the others are leaving. And as I said, no hard feelings. Uh, that's how it is. You would like right. them to stay, but uh, things have changed with Rambuka's departure. So it was, uh, you felt it was all going to happen. It was, it, it, in essence, it was a power struggle. Um, you may call it that, um, but uh, remember in 2018, uh, four of us contested for the leadership, Rambuka, uh, Andre Charlie, uh, Kiliraki, and myself. Rambuka won, we all combined, united, and stayed as one for, for the party to compete in 2018 as a united party. 2022, I won. It is here now. People, people did not, people did not accept my, uh, you know, my, my selection. Mm. But the party is, is, is a dominant factor here, not, not personalities. Eh? That's how Sadelpa works. Eh? We uh, toe the line um, for the, with the party. We, we're not personalities come and go. The party is the one that we need to look after. Mm. Eh? And, and we will come to that because, I mean, mm. there seems to be in many ways lack of discipline. Some, some would say in terms of party, the way. The way uh, the, you, you're saying the party is the main thing, but when, uh, you know, when we come out, we're hearing, I mean, basically the drama was unfolding in the public eye for all to see amongst the personality. But we'll get, we'll, we, we, mm -hmm. we, we need to move mm -hmm. on. Uh, in an interview in 2020, you, you stated that Sodelpa still needed Rambuka to claim victory at the 2022 polls. This is what you said. Uh, I, I'm quoting from a Radio News in Now, Ngawaka said Sodelpa still needed Rambuka. He has indicated he will stay. And of course, we need heavy hitters in Sodelpa, Ngawaka said. We met prior to the opening of Parliament and we met afterwards. I'm honored that I have him on my side. When you're marching to victory, you need the firepower and he brings the firepower. We need him on our side. Rambuka is an icon. He's a giant in Fijian politics and he is going to be with us in 2022. That's now not happening. Do you still have the firepower? Well, um, you know, the unity that, that, had, that uh, happened under Sodelpa had the firepower. Huh? You had Rambuka. You had the Ngana Moramambale, Rokotu Ndiketi, you had the Tuitha Kau, and you had the Turanga Bunivalu. I mean, I, I consider myself as one of the luckiest party leaders in the country. I had this firepower with me. And, um, it was not a united firepower, though. I mean, we know behind the scenes that there was Yeah, not but you know, you, you can manage that. You know, mm. you can manage that. We, I, I thought that we could manage it. Um, and uh, as, you, as you highlighted, he, he indicated in many ways that he would stay. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm this kind of guy who accommodates people. You know, I, I, I believe in network. So I, you know, I, I wanted him to stay, you know, because of that firepower. All, you know, marching together to victory with all the heavy hitters with me. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it did not happen. Eh? Hmm. So you've changed your strategy. Uh, you've, you've put a new lineup. What's the new strategy for Sudelpa? We are very much uh, policy driven. Um, we not personality driven. Not personality driven. Okay, what we have here, uh, Stanley, is um, is the the kind of models that you use uh, in a, in the in this election or any election uh, in Fiji. You have what you call the superstar model, and this is uh, Honorable Benny Marama. Uh, he's our number one, and uh, the majority of the votes go to him. The 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 promotion is. Is, is, is uh, yeah. geared towards him, right? Um, Rambuka did that towards the home stretch in 2018. But Sodelpa is a constituency driven party. We have 28. I know that, yes. And the 28 constituencies are divided into terms. So the strategies for us is to empower the terms to run their terms exclusively and produce seats for, for uh, parliamentary seats in parliament. Eh? Because that's just going against, not going against, it's more like uh, um, different from the whole one constituency <coughs> model that 
that, exactly. that's been trying to be done. So you're going to go like try and win with people 3,000, 3,000, 3,000 small numbers to make up uh, to make up your do grand total. Yes, we've done the numbers, um, and we can get uh, 32 seats or even 35 uh, from from all those turfs around the country. But the important thing is this. Um, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, Stanley. We need representation in parliaments. Some constituencies in Fiji don't have representatives in parliament. They don't have parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. And that defeats the purpose of, of parliamentary democracy. There is no voice for a constituency in parliament. It's the highest, uh, yeah. you know. It, 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 I, I know the discussion that we had about the political system that we have. Yeah. But essentially, and, and we, we can get to that, but I mean, this, essentially it's a constituency-based strategy. Mm. To win the 2022 election, mm. 2022 elections, uh, yeah. correct? Yeah, right. absolutely. We yeah. are with uh, Sodalpa Party leader Vilaminga Walker discuss, discussing the inner workings of Sodalpa. <coughs> we'll be back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Simpson at 8. We are with uh, Sodalpa Party leader Bill Ngavoka. Thank you again for joining me on the show. Now, um, you've selected your 28 of the 55 provincial candidates. Right. <coughs> now, of the 28, only five, including yourself, are sitting MPs, which is, include the uh, recently sworn in Mary Samison, uh, mm -hmm. in the 21 sitting. So that's Anre Chale, Mikalewere, Tanya, and Mary. Then uh, Miss Samsoni. Then you've brought uh, back Semesa Karavaki, Kini Viliami Kiliraki, and Joseph Andulaki, who stood in the 2014 but lost in the 2018 yeah. uh, elections. The, so, um, and Rotimum is not contesting the election? No. no. Okay, so we're not expecting to see her name come up in the next 28. Uh, then Nawekula is ruled out because of the conviction. And essentially, you having you know the court still yet to decide, but four or five whose position is in jeopardy due to that court case, mm. uh, and the other nine, are you expecting them to stay or go? The Others, nine, the, the nine, the from other uh, remaining MPs, that's there. Um, except for um, Honorable Asir and Honorable Simeon Arasova. The others um, have indicated. They have indicated. Yeah, that they will not be um, joining so they, us. They live in. They live in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. essentially, they just f uh, finishing off running out their time in Parliament. Right. In, uh, mm -hmm. As part of Sadelpa. That's right. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to talk about party discipline and unity because uh, you had this. What lessons have you learned? Now you're the leader. You've removed the people who you've said, or they've left. The they people left. who you've yeah. said. Uh, were never, you know, going to last with the party anyway. And you have a new new team. But so I'd like to, you know, there's been an image of a toxic environment that pervades mm -hmm. Sodalpa. What are you as party leader going to do to bring about discipline and try to unite everyone? Yeah, thanks. I must say that the, the 28 that we have on board um, and the, those that are yet to be uh, confirmed, We've done some. We've done some interviews um, already. One thing that I see today is a stronger sense of loyalty. Yeah? That was missing in the in the Sudalpa of today. Missing loyalty to the party, to the party, to each other, to the team. Huh? Uh, you may remember that um, in 2015, 2016, you had the Ngono Vinaga report that threatened the party leader then, the Honourable uh, Roti Mumukapa. And then Rambuka himself had his challenges within the party uh, in terms of loyalty. And, I, and I've been through that too. So a, a huge part of the, of the equation right now when we interview our people is that they must be loyal to the party. Right? Um, and I believe it's going to happen. Uh, I've seen the quality of the people that we have. Um, and um, these are people who joined the party in an, in, a, in an environment that was perceived to be toxic, you know, I mean, why, why would you join? Why would you join Sudalpa if it, if it is if it is that bad? So to me, it's an indication of the policy that we the, the position we had in place put in place that we will go back to the SDL to the SDL uh, 
family. We'll keep that in check. And the principles and the policies of, of, of SDL will dominate the party going right. forward. I want to say that because I was uh, on social media recently and saw one of your 28, yeah. uh, Seramai Twitter, the former army officer. Mm -hmm. And he also tried to form his own party in 21. He's now in Sudelpa. And in this recent Facebook post, he is talking about the 2000 school and how he joined so that he could sack another, another Chale. And in, when he's speaking in the Italian language, he said, I have no time to talk to Anna Rechale anymore. So, I mean, I was looking at that and said, this doesn't seem like a party that's, uh, that's starting on a new fresh start. So, mm. you know, like, there seems to be that element that still exists within the party. Mm. I, I am aware of that. Um, I have spoken to, uh, to uh, Mr. Twitteri and also to Honorable Chale. Um, I, will, I will resolve the issue. It, it's something that goes back to 16 years ago. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for it to be raised publicly, I mean, you talked about just, uh, you know, together, loyalty mm. to each other. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be a true reflection of, of what There will saying. be a number, you know, and, and some cases where we'll need to come in and resolve some, um, some you know, mediate between people. Um, but um, Otherwise, we have a very strong team, mm. and, it, and it's a matter of managing those relationships. Because every time the media has asked the uh, Sodelpa people, you know, you're not united, you know, what's, what's happening? And the answer we always get is that we're a very, very democratic party, and, uh, you know, we allow people's views to be heard. But at some um, time, discipline will need to be enforced, don't you agree? Yes, absolutely. Um, and like I said, you know, the, 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 the quality of people that we have, the 20 um, you know, it's quite... Uh, it's quite, you know, I'm very pleased with the, the quality of people we have. Um, sitting parliamentarians, former parliamentarians, uh, quite a number of uh, school teachers, uh, yeah. educators, uh, lawyers, um, one from Kiyo and Rambi. I'm really interested in Kiyo and Rambi. We will have a Rotuman uh, candidate coming also, um, and others from other communities. All in all, I'm very pleased with the, uh, with the, with the lineup that I have. And again, youth, I, I... You have youth uh, representation? In, uh, yes. Because one thing, one criticism I saw someone make was that not, not, not many women were in the 28 lineup. Stanley, I, I go out of my way to, to encourage women to join uh, politics. Huh? Uh, mm. I think um, we still need to do a lot of work in that area. But for the, for the, uh, the next 27, there are women who are coming into that. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on now to the election, uh, the issues, and the issues that will, de in, in many ways, decide the elections. But before we talk about what your priority areas are, there was this: the government released this pre-election economic and fiscal update. It's a requirement under the Financial Management Act, requiring political parties, if you're going to make any commitment or any promise to the people, you have to establish where you're going to get the funds, how you're going to pay for it, what it'll mean to the debt and to the economic. I mean, the economic situation in the country. But before we talk, uh, you know, before we talk about what you're going to do, let's, let, what do you think of this act? Because it's the first time, and it's quite something of consequence to, what do you think of this act and, uh, and this uh, requirement <coughs> for these elections? Yeah, certainly, uh, we were shocked when this came up. Um, and it came through as a consequential bill. A consequential bill, as you know, is uh, a bill that is a con con consequence of a, of a budget. Eh? You know, in the budget, you, you, you make plans to do many things. Eh? But to make them happen, you need, you need to pass a bill. And they, they, these are the consequential bills. This one here was never part of, of the budget. Um, it came through um, as a consequential bill, hidden in the Financial Management Act that was amended at that time. Eh? And you were given only one hour to debate it, one hour. One hour. One hour to debate it. I mean, you know, you know what a bill is. A bill is a draft. A draft has to go through a lot of process before it becomes an act. Right? Um, that is a tragedy of the current government, um, Stanley, that they, they, they bring in uh, bills of, the, of this magnitude in a manner that is, that doesn't, you know, that, that, gives, that gives very little opportunity to the, to the parliamentarians to, to, you know, to make sense of it. Eh? You remember the Bill 17? Remember, there was a, an act that was passed in 1940, amended uh, in a very significant way over, one, over, over a one-hour debate. So that's, that's um, something that we will change when we become government. We will give the bills 
the we will enact laws in the proper manner. Eh? Not not right. the way it's being but, done today. Uh, yeah. We've heard the opposition make mm. make this make yeah. this comment uh, quite a bit. But uh, essentially, um, are you able to fulfil the conditions of this financial management act? Uh, this this needing requiring before you make <coughs> a commitment. You have to mm. As you've indicated, you know, we, we have to sow to somebody. We don't know who. Is it the elections office or the Ministry of Economy? Or where we get the funding? Um, and how are we going to spend it? Uh, how will it affect the, uh, the debt in the country? And how, how are we going to fund a deficit if it comes to that? So you, you're eventually asking us to prepare a full budget for, uh, you know, for, for, the, for, for, all, policy, your for policy all our policies. Yeah. The manifesto. Um, it's, it's a huge ask, um, and, and, I, and, I, and I raised it in Parliament last week, because the way the Attorney General put it to us again, reminded us, I said, you know, you are threatening us, you know, you, this is a threat to us, um, and, and, and it uh, impacts on the way we year out for elections, eh? it impacts on the way we, uh, we involve. You Do you know. think it will be used to, to, say, disqualify some of... I, I feel sorry for the smaller parties. How are they going to do it? I mean, we, we are a major party. Uh, we have our people in place, the economists and all that, who are doing the, uh, you know, the crunching numbers right now. But, it, but it's a struggle. But right? you're making an attempt to fulfill it. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we because, have, I mean, it's a good <laughs> thing to, to tell people the whole basic thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, can you get the, your information required from the pre-election economic and physical update was provided by the Minister of Economy? It, it is um, they are helpful as indicators mm. on, on where the source, sources of income uh, are from. Um, but, you know, you, 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 um, that will tie you down to the current situation, with the current economic conditions. Right. Eh? We, we are looking further down the road. So you're making the projections. Yeah. We, we, we expect normalcy to be, to be here in the next two, uh, two years or so. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's very subjective. And again, I say, I ask a question in Parliament, who is the competent authority to decide that our manifesto passes the mark? Right. Are we going to get an A or B or E or F or what? You know? When are you expecting to release your manifesto? We are putting it, putting it out in bits. Um, um, so that's what I've been seeing. In the, we've been seeing on your pages. You're yeah. releasing so policies. That's, that's we have we are three three are doing the rounds now on uh, education, on land, and indigenous affairs. Um, I think we're doing uh, poverty, uh, women. Uh, th three more this this, this, right. this week. Yeah, so they'll be coming out. But when they do come out. We also have the costings that go with it. Eh? Okay, because I didn't see the costings in the. No, no. Uh, we we asked we asked them the, the the elections office. I said, so what do we do? Do we bring our manifesto to you with all the costings before we can talk about it? They mm. said, no, no, no. You go ahead and campaign on your manifesto, but be ready when we come and ask you how you're going to cost it. So it, it's not going to be like an exam <laughs> kind of stuff. Okay, eh? okay. So the elections office will be coming to check on how you go cost it. They said, be ready to answer questions from yeah. Uh, presumably by them, eh? okay. because we asked them in one of the meetings, do you have a template we could use? I said, no, we don't have a template. So we are using the budget estimates of governments and go through them almost on a line-by-line -line basis. Eh? Like I said, it's quite a task. Eh? Yeah, it hasn't been done in Fiji before, obviously something new. No. Mm. Uh, Narumbi asked last week whether it has been done in any government else in the world. Uh, do you know of it happening? I... I um, I know people uh, would have to justify um, some of their positions on, on a number of... Because AG said that this is the sign of mature democracies and, and parties when they put things out that they have the numbers. And you know, we've seen it in, in overseas, <coughs> overseas right. you know, at that level and that, you know, with the maturity, so to speak, of where we yeah. are now, you should be able to, to have those abilities. Not to the extent that they want today, yeah? because if, if, if you look at what they want, you virtually have to produce a, a, an entire estimate, a government estimate, similar to what we get in the budgets every year. I, I, you know, I, I can talk about education, free tertiary, and I can defend that. But then to put it into the whole scheme of things means having to look at every... There are 50 heads in a government estimate every year. Budget. I have to look at every head in that budget estimate. Right. So it's quite a task. Yeah. Right. Thank you. You're watching Simpson at 8. Uh, we're with uh, Sudalpa Party leader Bill Ngavoka. After the break, we'll discuss the party's key priority issues.
Welcome back to Simpson and Eight. Uh, Mr. Ngavoka, key priority issues for the Sodalpa. What are you discussing in your campaign meetings or in your campaigns at the moment? Okay. Um, we have our guys, um, you know, we have Tukini Dama, one of the best communicators in the country, who's helping craft our uh, communiques in, in terms of our issues. But primarily three areas. Number one is education. Um, I think you know that Sodelpa will bring free tertiary to everyone in this country. Yeah? There'll be no more scholarships. There'll be no more, um, you know, selective, um, you know, uh, Programs, program, yeah. Like no, that. if you if you get a um, if you get a letter from a university or from a technical college saying that you have qualified to enter our institution, you will go in free. That is, I would have to ask, how will you pay for that? Going back to what uh, you were saying earlier on, on how you, where you got to get the money from, it's all it's all costed. Um, that's number one. And number two, you we meaning that uh, sorry, just get us mm. before you go to number two. Um, that means you'll you'll basically fund or subsidize. Yeah. It's not basically sub uh, subsidize. You have to pay. Really, you cover the cost of running a tertiary institution. Absolutely. If you're giving yeah. everyone tertiary education, yes. that's right. That's quite up, a promise. Up, up up to a first degree. Up to your first degree. Up yeah? to your first degree. It comes to about two hundred million dollars. We've done the, we've done the sums, um, and government has a year. A year, two hundred million dollars, and you know. If you do that, you cut from somewhere. Okay? Our road system has always had about $540, $560 million a year. We believe with $300 million a year, over a four-year period during our term, there's $1.2 billion. We can do a lot of good stuff on our roads. So you, know, you cut from that area to help you fund education. Um, it can be done. Um, it's taken a while to digest uh, those numbers. Uh, I, th I think it's once you're committed to it, and we know that uh, we are committed, we know that it needs to be done, you can find the money. You can find the money. Um, when, 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 I, when I tell people that $300 million a year on roads will give us some very good roads. Over because I mean, some of those the $500 million is actually being funded through debt. And, yes. uh, you know, it's not, you know, well... We haven't really checked the breakdown of the numbers, but mm. you know, this could perhaps potentially lead to greater debt. That uh, you know, we all know that we will continue to have um, a budget of about um, you know three something billion dollars as we have today. Yeah, um, we will continue to borrow, uh, but but nothing nothing out of whack to what we currently see today. Yeah, um, the deficits uh, with us, we believe that. Um, over a 10-year period, we can bring down the debts into below 40% of GDP. Yeah? That's where we need to be, yeah? okay. uh, to be at. So essentially, you'll fund it by cutting down on the roads. On the roads, yeah. On the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, and maintaining of the roads, you think is okay with $300 million? $300 million? A year. Yeah, a year. That's yeah. right. So we'll look into that. So, um, so why not? Why, why education? Why not directly just put it into poverty or some other areas, uh, if I may ask? Uh, Our... Our way forward, Stanley, is education. Eh? Yeah. What we see and what I see personally is that we spend a lot of money on programs in this country, but the execution is always very poor. Eh? You know, we don't do a good job of doing things. Eh? Mm. And it's because of the lack of um, you know, education. We're not well educated. We are not well trained. A particular focus is in the trades area. Eh? We want to grow the pool of skilled tradesmen in this country. Yeah? Technical colleges will, will be a main part of this, you know, the TVAT programs. Yeah? Um, we do that, I believe, in 20 years' time. This will be a very different country. Yeah? All right. Because mm. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind is there are plenty of educated people in the country right now that don't have jobs. So, I mean, you, you, <laughs> you can have an educated country without jobs. So maybe, maybe we can pivot to that. You know, how, how are you looking to create jobs mm. and create job creation? There's a lot of opportunities in resources, yeah. Um, I've always said this in parliaments. We have about $5 billion worth of mature mahogany in this country. We're not doing much, you know, we're not doing anything uh, to that, uh, with that. Um, well, what it is, you, you, you want to do a lot of uh, value adding in the country. And it takes a lot of educated people. Huh? 
I give you a point, um, a case in point is the PEFCO in, in Levuka. That is a highly specialized, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, operation. We cannot always find the expertise in Fiji to, to work in Levuka and produce the, the kind of products that would be market, marketable uh, all over the world. That's where I'm coming from. We, we, we you know, in, in Levuka was, was, packing, was packaging some um, uh, freeze products for Japan. It came to a stage where the Japanese said, no, no, you're, you're, below, you're below quality. You know, you will not, you will close it down. Th that is where I'm coming from. All right, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, <coughs> there are skilled workers and there's highly, you know, uh, unskilled workers in mm. the country. You know? So essentially, you know, you have to fill them up. You know, you know, the way you look at it, almost everyone will be getting a degree, but, uh, you know, the jobs to accommodate for that highly qualified, quite jobs is going to be... Um, it's going to be challenging. <coughs> mm. I mean, people mm. have to work at, at, at diff, you know, uh, fast food places and things. Uh, you have to accommodate for various different uh, industries and markets in terms of um, when you're talking about education. So the range of the econo economy and industries that's out there. There's a lot of opportunities that go begging here, uh, Stanley. Yeah? Um, I was just, over the last couple of uh, sittings, uh, the last sitting, we're talking about the coconut industry. What happened to it? You know, it just kind of fallen apart. I mean, there's so much out there. Um, maybe even the sugar industry can do a lot better than what it is doing today. Yeah? Lambasa Mill can cross 1.2 million tons of, of uh, cane. Eh? It's only doing 600,000. So, you know, you, you just fill in the gaps. We'll take, uh, we'll need a lot of uh, trained right. people. Right? right. Okay. Education. Yeah. Free, ed free tertiary education was the other aspect of the education policy. Together program. with that is the forgiveness of the TELS uh, debt. The debt. Yeah. Um, a lot of freebies, I would say. Look. You've all, it, I mean, it, the it's something that's always it, criticized this Fiji first of giving out freebies. You well, this one here is, is, uh, is, a, <laughs> is more meaningful. Is it an investment? It's an investment, yeah. Um, I don't, we don't like seeing our people to be burdened by debt, huh? You know, you know how much it is today, yeah? $600 million, yeah? And we've, we've the done, tells that. Yeah. Mm. We've done the numbers. We can save from the, some other programs to fund us, to, to give us a savings, to enable us to pay off the debts. You know, you and I went into the workforce without a $30,000 debt on our, you know, on our back kind of stuff. Eh? So imagine what people are going through right now, what the grief that they are facing. It's challenging. Yeah? So you aim yeah. to... Um, to absorb that. Start with a clean slate, okay? Take away tells, and anyone who comes after these has free tertiary, uh, including, uh, you know, technical colleges. So, so that to us is a huge, uh, it's, it's a huge call, but we are ready for it. We have the political will to do it, and I believe it's going to benefit the country in, the, in many in significant ways. Eh? Okay, mm. let's uh, come to the other ones. Um, what are the ones you put out? Land, what, what's the policy on land? Land will basically be um, uh, tied mostly to the, uh, to the security of, uh, of ten tenure. Um, we debated a uh, state land bill um, on Thursday, last week, where um, uh, those that um, were sitting on state land, but with questionable leases, were given a provision that they, that they can enable them to lease that land. That is fine with us. But a major player in this that has, that has been ignored or neglected is the traditional landowners. We want to make sure that everyone travels together. We all travel together in one bus. You cannot, you cannot just uh, do this on state land, on crown land, without considering the, um, the traditional landowners. So, we will effectively um, give crown land back to the traditional landowners. And the government will not be a landlord without affecting the, ten the, 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 uh, the tenure of the, of the tenant. We'll protect that. But you cannot continue to ignore the, the, the traditional landowners, most of whom believe that the land was not properly, the transaction from day one was not, was not proper. I noted, I mean, just before we move on to your other issues, I noted the Prime Minister saying we will not open that part because it will open up 
a whole mess if you're going back and trying to open up the whole land issue from 1890, 1870 something. It won't. It won't. Um, <coughs> because, I mean, it's, it's under order now. Once you open it up, there'll be a lot of no, no. complications. No. And uh, though some of those land are under dispute amongst the landowners themselves, amongst mm -hmm. different Matangalis and mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, you, you could potentially be opening up a can of worms here. No, we will not. Um, the important thing is to protect the, the, the tenure, the, the tenant, okay? I want to reassure them that they will lose nothing. All, all that will change is that the, the lease that is, that is currently, currently con collected by government goes to the landowner. That is the only change that we see. No, nothing changes. Okay. Of course, there will, there's some Matangali issues, in there, but that will be resolved through... I mean, those lands became crown land because, mm. as it as it was said at the time, that there was no one claiming it mm. at the time. I mean, that's why they became crown land in many ways. Yeah, but you you, you go back to that time, you know, when the, when these guys came down for the Vitarangi Vanua, you know, the land question. <laughs> they didn't know about it. They went fishing. You know, uh, they said, you know, we came back. Somebody has said the land belonged to him. So it's in the. So you know, we want to correct all this stuff. But I must I must again emphasize. No one should feel threatened that they will lose the tenancy on any land. It's just a matter of making sure that the traditional landowner benefits from, from the proceeds of this land. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've touched on education, on land, and you've released, what's the third one that I think you've released? Uh, health. Health. Mm -hmm. well, yes. Um, Stanley. That's been a big issue, yeah. uh, even <coughs> for this government. And yeah. people will be looking keenly on mm -hmm. what, uh, what will be, what, what's your commitment? Stanley, COVID-19 has taught us that health um, is going to be paramount um, in any country in the world. And more so for Fiji, mm -hmm. with, with tourism being our biggest industry. Yeah? There was a research conducted at the University of Queensland in Australia, um, a survey that was conducted. And it indicated that people will go to a country and, 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 and the paramount uh, motivator would be whether the country has a good health system. Eh? So without tourism, visitors to Fiji must be confident they are visiting a country where the health system is uh, at par with what they have at home. So this is where we're going to be driving our, um, our, our policies on health. We're going to make sure that every outlet has a proper operating uh, par of equipment. Eh? I'm a hotelier, and you know, I was a hotelier. And in, in a hotel, the service is dependent on the power that you carry, the equipment that you carry, you know, the, and the supplies that you carry. So you're talking about health centers yeah. and will all be... They must be properly equipped. You don't think they're properly equipped right now with... People go down to uh, Lotoka for an x-ray or super. Oh, it's out of, it's, it's out of, uh, it's not working today. Okay, you, you, you go down to Lotoka, it's working in Lotoka. That, that what has the government done wrong uh, in terms of the health system? Because, I mean, they've put a lot of money and investment into it as well. Uh, they've trained a lot of doctors. Where do you think the problem has been with, in terms of the health care in this country? We've asked this many questions. Uh, we've asked this question many times. Eh? We've asked the question as to why at CWM there are eight operating theaters, only two are functioning. I mean, where's the focus here? You know, I mean, that to me would be, would be immediate. You know, if, if there are eight operating theaters in CWM, those eight must be fully operational. What is it? I'm told the air conditioning does not work. Um, you know what I mean? I, right. I, like I said, I was a hotelier. When something doesn't work in my hotel, I fix it. You know? Um, so and, and the same, the same uh, approach will be, you know, will be the way we handle the health, uh, the health uh, right. sector. Yeah? Mr. Walker, plenty issues, plenty more issues to discuss. Um, but uh, you know, this is the first interview. I'm sure we'll have about two, three more interviews <laughs> before the election actually takes place. Uh, before we we finish off, just uh, your uh, again to the people on Sodelpa and what your chances are and why people should uh, believe in you. <coughs> okay, thank you, Stanley. We are a party that has been around for 21, 22 years. Um, Again, I will say, I mean, yeah, Sodelpa well, has eight years. 
Well, you know, Stanley, we were SDL. It's just that a regulation came in, the law came in and said, you know, you cannot use your uh, native name and, you know, but yeah. the core, the ethos, the whole thing right. is still SDL. We won two elections and we formed government twice. We got overthrown and we come, came back as opposition and we are ready today to come to contest and win the 2022 elections. Eh? We are a very inclusive party. Um, we understand uh, what needs to be done, and the youth are a major part of this country, hence the, the, the education and the child thing. And, and, a, and a, lot, a lot of the programs for youth in terms of employment creation, um, apprenticeships and the like. And, um, you know, health. Um, these are all very inclusive, very inclusive uh, programs for everyone. Eh? We look after, we also want to um, bring up the Itoke economically. We should all be in the same bus traveling together. And we know in economics, the Itoke have been left. They are not in the bus right now. And so we will, we'll, that, that's all part of being the... Uh, being it's inclusive. not just the Itoke though, there's also people from other ethnic groups that are also in poverty. Yes, well. yes, so, absolutely. Um, like I said, um, we, we have a uh, member from Kio and Rambi. And the Bonabans and the Tuvaluans are a very major part of that. The Rotumans, these are Rotuman uh, candidate also. So every ethnic community in Fiji will be included under, under Sudalpur. Even the um, um, Indian, Indo-Fijian community? Indo-Fijian community communities. Is welcome to the party? We've always been very strong with them. We want them to, to come and be part of us. Um, and it's, uh, it's always been there. The, right. door, the door is always there for them. And we. We've interviewed and we've taken on some very, very dynamic uh, people from the Indian the okay, Indonesian so before community. we go to like 32 seats, Sorry? what did you project? 32 seats? With a constituency-driven um, uh, approach, um, we'll, we, we'll, 28 is minimum. Oh, 28. But we, we believe we can do, do 32, and some people are saying 35. Huh? All right. Yeah. Mr. Ngavoka, very confident. Thank you for joining me on Simpson today. Thank you. That was Simpson at 8 for the evening. Join exactly. me again next Thursday at the same time. Good night.